Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is LaQueen Battle of Battle for Safe Responder Services. Good morning. Um, today it is Sunday, January the 22nd, 2023. Happy New Year and Happy Chinese Lunar New Year. I'm here right now currently on the campus of Harvard University. So you are going to have to excuse the noise. There's a couple of kids here uh, right now here on campus of Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So please do excuse the noise. Kids are everywhere. So anyway, let's just make this today. It's going to be a quick forecast right now today on Sunday, January the 22nd. As we see, we have the National Weather Service forecast right now. The climate, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a couple of reports today on the climate as well as um, the air quality control index, the National um, Oceanic Aeronautical and Administration reports too, as well as some other reports right now on the weather, current, current weather conditions for the next three to seven days here in the city of Boston and Cambridge, as well as the northeast coast here in the United States. So. Bear with me, I'm gonna introduce myself. My name is LaQueen Battle, I'm a certified medical assistant. Last night I became a, um, um, so bear with me here. Um, I am, uh, last night I took a course and I actually became a National Weather Service spotter. So right now I'm a National Weather Service spotter with the, um, NWS, National Weather Service Center, and in OAA. So I'm very happy to be here today and be able to share this information with you guys too as well. So bear with me here. Bear with me if you can on, on these details right now. I want to go ahead and get into um, uh, the forecast for today. So here we go. Um, right now, as you see these conditions here in the northeast, all the way from north into course, Portsmouth into Gloucester, as well as into Plymouth and Hyannis, so here on the northeast coast that goes into Providence, Rhode Island, more southern Newport, as you can tell here. We're going to go ahead and get into some little bit more details right now here. I'm going to click here. This is the official website for the, for the National Weather Service Center is www.weather.gov. Overcast day of 29 negative 2 degrees Celsius. Here is the outlook for the next three to five days. Today is going to be high of high of 39 degrees and a low of 35 degrees. Expect rain in the forecast tonight for about 7, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock later on tonight. It's going to be a rain expected, 100% chance of rain expected in uh, the evening. Tomorrow, on Monday the 23rd, there's going to be um, a wintry snow mix and breezy. You can expect a high of 37 for Monday morning, the 23rd, and a low of 27 degrees. Um, chances of, and then and Monday evening, chance of snow is 30% and blustery. So expect snowstorms later on tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning and evening as well. Um, Tuesday, it's going to be partly sunny, high of 40, and a low of 23rd, low of 23 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, expect that snow to clear up on Tuesday morning and then have a clear night on Tuesday evening, Wednesday the 24th. I uh, would expect mostly again um, the snow is going to return back here as you can check this forecast for the next three to five days. Expect mostly cloudy, then a chance of snow. High of 38 on Wednesday and low of 31. On Wednesday evening, expect snow, and then on Thursday evening to finish out the week, we're gonna have a breezy rain here. A chance, uh, eighty percent to fifty percent chance of rain, rainstorms in the morning to the evening. High of forty-eight expected on Thursday evening, Thursday morning, and Thursday evening, the twenty-sixth of January. So bear with me, bear with me guys here as well, okay? So here's the next here's the next three to five day forecast coming from uh, the city of Salem, Massachusetts. You can go in here and there's a report in the Beverly Municipal Airport in Beverly, Massachusetts as well, okay? So all of this is available on the weather.gov website. 
You can get more information, more details from there too as well. They do expect a flood of advisory in effect from um, tomorrow, the 23rd on Monday, up until tomorrow afternoon from um, 10 a.m. in the morning to 2 o'clock in the afternoon on the, on the coastal, coastal uh, beachfront here in the weather, weather.gov website. As you can see here, the nautical report is saying coastal flood advisory in effect from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the afternoon up to one and a half foot of inundation above ground level expected in low line areas and the shorelines and tidal waterways in eastern exits Massachusetts to Suffolk and eastern Norfolk Massachusetts and eastern Plymouth Massachusetts counties you can do this from it'll be happening up from 10 a.m. in the morning to 2 p.m. in the afternoon I expect flooding lots of park uh, flooding of lots parks and roads with only isolated road closures expected. It's giving you your travel report here from National Weather Service Center. It's saying if travel is required, allow extra time as some roads may be closed. Do not drive around barricades or through water of unknown depth. Take the necessary action flood prone property. And this is the title report here, the ocean uh, beachfront title report here. All of this is available on forecast.weather.gov here. It's giving you that nautical report. Here are the tide, high tide, low tide, and the flood impact and the waves, the waves report. It's gonna be a little bit high, uh, small to medium high uh, waves, two to three feet in the morning. Coming up until and later in the afternoon, about four to five feet of waves and three to four feet of waves too as well finish that off here all this tile report ocean Island report is available on forecast.weather.gov so here's a nautical uh, coastal advisory report here is available so anyway i wanted to go ahead and give that to you guys tomorrow is the humidity report 75 degrees 75 percent uh, humidity, chance of humidity. So please stay layered and clothed layered. Uh, the wind is uh, low to medium high, uh, low. Um, a chance of southwest winds of nine miles per hour. Barometer is 30.2.3 inches. Dew point 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Visibility is clear, but it might be a little bit cloudy at 10 uh, miles at 10 miles. Wind chill is 21 degrees Fahrenheit. And then, as uh, you can see very further here into more detail. So, um, all of this is available per permission to use from the National Weather Service Center. So, bear with me. Uh, bear with me on my report. I will also be able to share this on my YouTube channel, my YouTube feed. I will be sharing this on my YouTube platform as well. Okay. So thank you to the National Weather Service Center. Now let's go ahead and get here into the National NOAA um, local airport, local airport uh, weather observations in the Lawrence H Haskum Field Airport. Um, overcast is 31 degrees Fahrenheit. Dew point is 24. Humidity 76. Wind is calm at Haskum Field Airport near uh, Brockton, Brockton, Massachusetts. The Boston Logan International Airport. Earlier this morning, the time. Overcast, it's overcast in the, um, for the skies. Uh, temperature 30 degrees Fahrenheit, dew point 22, humidity 72, wind of southwest 12, 12, uh, 12G20. Pressure 30.24, Beverly Municipal Airport, Beverly, Massachusetts, and, and, and a quarter of till 10. Overcast is in the skies, it has an overcast. Uh, 29 degrees Fahrenheit, dew point is 22, humidity is 75, wind is, is southwest at 9. East Milton uh, hasn't been reported, and the Norwood Memorial Airport uh, overcast at 9.53 uh, a.m. earlier this morning. Temperature is 30 degrees Fahrenheit, dew point is 23. 23. Humidity is 66, wind is at calm, and the pressure is at 30.23 degrees, 30.2 uh, um, 
three inches in the Norwood Memorial Airport. So all this is the local weather observations found in the airports um, here in the state of Massachusetts. So you can all find us as well at a forecast.weather.gov too. Here's the official website, forecast.weather.gov. Forecast.weather.gov. You can find all this information available on forecast.weather.gov. Now, here I'm going to go to um, the National uh, Oceanic Aeronautical Report for the Hot Tide Report near the beachfront. As you can see here on the east coast in Boston, the tide is relatively um, low, here it is, medium size, low, between three feet per century right here. You can see the green arrows in the city of Boston right here. New York, the tide is relatively a little bit medium, almost high, but not that much, uh, near um, Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Bridge. New York right here, three to six uh, feet per century here. And one to two, uh, well, three, three to six uh, mm per year, and about uh, one to two feet per century. This is the tide report here. And two, going up into Maine, the same as in Boston, you have zero three uh, feet per century right here. And the relative relative sea level trends here in Maine, up until New Brunswick, Canada, and Nova Scotia. And up, up until Montreal is pretty much about the same. The tide is relatively um, low to medium height on the sea level trends. It says here how they're measured. It's measured by the tide gauges that are present in the local relatively sea level trend as opposed to the global sea level trend. The tide gauge measurements are made with respect to local fixed reference on land. RSL is a combination of the sea level rise and the local vertical land motion. The global sea level trend has been reported by satellite um, altimeters since 1992, and the latest global trend can be obtained from NOAA's Laboratory for Satellite Altimetry with maps of the local regional variation in the trend. Uh, this map is made by the University of Colorado Sea Level Research Group. So thank you to the University of Colorado for their research and giving us this, um, this sea level trim report compares global sea level rates calculated, calculated by different research organizations and discusses some of the issues involved. So we want to go ahead and thank the University of Colorado for their wonderful report. It goes all the way here up to the East Coast, low to medium, relatively high, uh, high, low to medium tie reports coming from Philadelphia to New York to Providence, all the way up into Halifax, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Canada, um, Southeastern Canada, Quebec, Montreal, and Ottawa. So here is a tie report, and then um, it goes a little bit lower up until that looks like Greenland. Uh, not Greenland, but um, Northern Canada. So, same as a little bit um, higher tide in New York and Philadelphia, a little bit higher tide in Washington, D.C., near uh, Maryland, D.C., and Virginia. And then here we go into Richmond, Virginia, and Norfolk, Virginia, with a relatively a little bit higher tide, uh, ocean, uh, little higher tide uh, report than Boston. So the wind as well as the sea level is a little bit higher right now today in um, DC, Virginia than it is in Boston. So they might have a little bit more um, he higher humidity rate and a little bit colder um, today in DC and Virginia rather than in Boston. So here is available the sea level trends from the NOAA, which is um, thank you again to the University of Colorado Sea Level Research Group for the information. 
and they do give these reports on the East Coast, West Coast, Gulf, and Alaska, and Hawaii, and the whole entire world. So we're going to go ahead and uh, extend this out a little bit. So a little bit medium-sized, uh, high, higher tides in Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., DMV area than it is in Boston. So keep going on that little bit higher tide report. All the way, um, waves, the humidity is higher. Um, all this information is available on tideandcurrents.noaa.gov, Washington, D.C., up in here to Philadelphia, South Carolina, Atlanta, and then it goes all the way up into Miami, Florida, all the way down. So here, and then there might be expected storms, expected storms in the Caribbean Sea. So all of this is reflected here. This tie report here from the NOAA and the University of Colorado. So again, thank you so much for the sea level trends report as well. So I'll be able to share this to you guys on my YouTube channel, University of Colorado. Sea level research. Group. So again, thank you to the University of Colorado Sea Level Research Group for the information in this report as well. Next, we're going to go ahead and go to the local uh, trends report in Revere, Revere, Massachusetts. Right now, we have about 30 degrees Fahrenheit Revere precipitation. There is no, pre no precipitation. The wind is 7 miles per hour. Low winds today in Revere. Near Revere Beach. Humidity is at 80 degrees humidity. So even though the humidity is high, I would encourage you all to stay layered. To stay layered and to stay hydrated with plenty of fluids. Plenty of fluids, water, as well as juices. And to keep your body hydrated while COVID-19 and the flu and RSV and all other kind of viruses and ailments are still in the air, I would encourage you all to keep hydrated and to know what is, uh, what is, a, what it pretty much, what is um, going on. So here is the weather report for the coastal flood and, av and advisory report for Revere, Massachusetts. Here is central Mass, central Boston. Um, Revere. The next, it gives you the next five to seven days report. Here today on January the 22nd, high of 41. Up until Friday the 27th, high of 34 degrees. A sunny Friday, low of 27. Going up until Saturday, high of 44 degrees, low of 25. Cloudy Sunday, the 29th next week to end out the month of January. High of 31, 29 degrees low. And we're ending up until the 31st of January. The high of 40 degrees, low of 30 degrees, ending out the month of January. So it's, we're going to have a, an end to a sunny, a sunny January, which is a little bit abnormal for the month of January going into February. So a high of 40 degrees. So usually the climate report for January does indicate low temperatures, but because uh, they might be due to just do some changes in the humidity, as you can see, today's humidity is 80 degrees, 80% 80 here. So expect during the week, uh, this Wednesday, to have a, um, snow, a snow cloudy mix of 35 degrees and low 34, still high temperatures for the month of January. Uh, January the 26th this Thursday, high of 51 degrees, low of 27. Friday, high of 34, low of 27. Sunny Friday, Sunday, Saturday. Going into next Monday, next Tuesday, still high temperatures for the month of January. Going into February, as we can see, hopefully expecting an early spring. 
hopefully, hopefully we will be expecting early spring, maybe on Groundhog Day, maybe, maybe not. But we will see that so far. And then here is um, on January the 30th, next Monday, hot humidity is 57 degrees, 57% chance of humidity. Going into the last day of January, humidity is high. Humidity is 80% chance, 80% humidity. Uh, low winds, 14 miles per hour precipitations, and uh, uh, low chance of rain at 13% precipitation. But the humidity is high. So what that means is we might have um, high temperatures, but COVID as well as easy transmission of viruses and illnesses is still in the air. So like I said before, continue to stay layered. The temperature is always fluctuating and always changing, but be sure to take care of your internal system and be, uh, and take care of your body and have a healthy, healthy diet as well. So as you can see on January the 31st, one o'clock in the morning, 5% chance of uh, precipitation, high of 36 degrees, Going into the morning, 10 o'clock next uh, next Tuesday, the 31st, 38 degrees, 39 degrees, and then it keeps going up until late, later in the evening on the 31st at 32 degrees here. As you can see, it's still high high temperatures for the month of January. But like I said right here, historical weather and averages, all of this is available on Bing.com, Microsoft Bing. Follow me here on the right side. Follow me here on the right side. Temperature for the month of January is um, it might be it might be due to climate control or it might uh, might not. But usually for the month of January, the temperatures average average at 19 degrees, high a low of 19, and a high of 36 degrees. So as you can see for next Monday, next Tuesday, the, the climate report, uh, next Monday, January the 31st, we're going at a high of 52 degrees for January the 30th. And, January, and Tuesday, January the 31st, it's going to be a high of 40 degrees. So usually we're averaging um, at the most... Uh, 20 to 25 degrees for the month of January. High, at the most high of 36 degrees, with the record, the record high in 2022 for the month of January was at 71 degrees for 2020. And that was during the presidential election between Donald, Donald Trump and President Biden and, and Joe Biden. So it was a record high for the month of January uh, for the month of January at 71 degrees during 2020, uh, two years ago, three years ago. So, and then a record low in 1994 of negative 10 degrees, which is less than 20, 25 years ago. So all of this is available, the historical weather and averages here. For the month of February, going into the month of February, we're less than a week and a half away. The average high was 38 degrees, and the average low was 20 degrees. For the month of, with the year of 2017, less than 10 years ago, five to 10 years ago, the record high was at 71 degrees. The record low was at negative 10 degrees in 2016. Going on until the month of March, average high was at 46 degrees, going into spring early spring with the average low of 28 degrees and the record high was in 1998 with 84 degrees for the month of March and 2015 was a negative zero degrees Fahrenheit uh, um, uh, I think it'll be a negative um, five to ten degrees Celsius in 2015 so again, all of this is available. If you follow me guys here on the historical weather and averages.
the temperature again for the month of January it averages high of 36 degrees here and the month and lo average low of 19 degrees for the month of January so I'm just giving you guys the historical weather and averages so like I said before I'm gonna be able to share this on my YouTube channel and on my Twitter feed about the historical weather and averages here as well as what's being done um, on the uh, almanac you can also check the historical weathers and averages reports on the almanac You can also find us on the Almanac. Any kind of Almanac from uh, the state of Massachusetts, Northeastern Coast, you can also check that too here. So let's go to the Almanac. By the port for a month of January. So if we go to almanac.com, so you're like, why is the weather? Why is the weather so high? Why is it changing so much? Is it supposed to be warm? Is it supposed to be cold? What's going on? So it says right here, it says January 2023 weather predictions. It says temperatures throughout the month of January are expected to be below average for much, for much of the U.S. from the plains eastward, although New England will likely turn out to be above average, as will also be the case for the Russian contiguous U.S., as well as Alaska and Hawaii. In Canada, temperatures will be warmer than normal from the Yukon and in Northwest Territories across the Maritimes, while most Southern areas will experience a cold January. So it says right here, it says, in Canada, temperatures will be warmer than normal from the Yukon and the Northwest and across the Maritimes, while most Southern areas will also experience a cold January. So in the South is gonna be cold, but temperatures in the Northeast and also the U.S. Plains from the Midwest to Chicago up into New York and Boston and to Maine, Portland, Maine, will likely turn out to be above average, okay, as much as the case. And also the West, the U.S., will up until Alaska and Hawaii, will likely turn out to be a warm, warm January. So that's what it's getting for the month of January 23. It says right here in the almanac.com, precipitation is expected to be near or above average across much of the U.S. in January. Also, Hawaii will be drier. Much of Canada will likely experience above average precipitation as well. Although Southern British Columbia may end up drier than average, as a potential storm track sets up more to the south across the western United States. So the precipitation is expected to be near or above average, so expect rain to be average or above average across much of the U.S. in January, although Hawaii will experience less rain. It says right here, it says Hawaii will be drier, therefore Hawaii will have less rain. And this is in almanac.com. Much of Canada will likely experience above average precipitation as well. Although Southern British Columbia may end up drier than average as the potential storm track sets up much to the south across the western United States. So it says right here, it says, much of Canada will likely experience above average precipitation as well. Although Southern British Columbia may end up drier than average as potential storm tracks sets up much to the south. So expect there to be more storms in the south 
as well as across the West. So all of this report is available <coughs> on almanac.com. So it's same right here, it's same. Excuse me. It's saying that precipitation is going to be low. Canada will experience high, a little bit higher precipitation than normal. Southern British Columbia may end up a little bit drier in Canada than above, as the potential storm track sets up much more to so expect more storms in the south, near Georgia as well as Nevada, um, low uh, south. East California, the Baja area, Lower Baja area, across the Western United States. So this is all available on Almanac.com for Sunday, January the 22nd of 2020. And it's also saying that La Nina is expected to stick around too. So um, La Nina is here. It says right here, it says La Nina pattern looks like it will stick around longer than expected okay so I expect it to be a La Nina as well so here are some predictions on almanac.com right here for La Nina okay it says the um, INSO the El Nino Southern Oscillation pattern in the Pacific when we were putting together the almanac.com the pattern was forecast to switch to either neutral or a weak El Nino. However, in recent months, it became apparent that the most likely scenario is La Nina holding on throughout the winter. So saying having La Nina three years in a row is a very rare occurrence. That has not happened since 1998 to 2001. The only other triple dip La Nina happened occurred about 1950. From 73 up to 76, the winter 2000 to 2001, the third winter in La Nina in the weakest of those three years looks similar to what we have today in 2023. As it turns out, it was a stormy winter across California, drier in the Northwest, waves of frigid air that impacted much of the central and eastern parts of Canada and the U.S. So same right here, the, El, the La Nina report is saying that there was a, going up until 1950s to 1973 up until 1976. It says there were waves of frigid air that impacted much of the central and eastern parts of Canada and the U.S. as well as a stormy winter report across California. So California has storms, of, including those fire storms and the floods, which is expected in La Nina from the 1950s up to 1973, 1976. And it was drier in the Northwest. Waves of frigid air that impacted much of central and eastern parts of Canada and the U.S. So that was a report of La Nina. The bottom line is that not all La Nina years are created equal. This being said, if this winter ends up being more of a traditional one, the weather may turn out to be a little drier then we forecast in the southwest. So that's the that's the La Nina weather report. It says it's going to be a little bit drier than forecast in the southwest. And the east might not be so cold. And this is a forecast for La Nina. La Nina is saying that it's going to be drier in the southwest. And the east might not be so cold. The jury and La Nina is still out on this one. So this report is from almanac.com. 
You can find all information on El Nino and La Nina on Almanac.com. It go ahead and gives you the, the, the weather forecast report for June of last year, uh, October and autumn, summer, June, the summer report for June, uh, the fall report for uh, October, and the 4th of July for summer of last year and this year. So, and then he goes into February from Groundhog Day. So bear with me, I'm here in the campus of Harvard University right now. As you see, classes are soon to start tomorrow, Monday morning here on the campus of Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So bear with me. So now we're on almanac.com. We're gonna go into the Groundhog Day, February 2023 forecast. So here is the report for Groundhog Day. It says, what's in store? For, thank you to Bob Smearbeck and Brian Thompson. It says, what's in store for February? Ice, rain, or something in between. Okay, including Groundhog Day and the Super Bowl for, Je for February of 2023. Here it is, February temperatures will be warmer than normal from the west to the Pacific coast, as well as Alaska and Hawaii. Near to below normal, Elsewhere, expected below normal precipitation from New England throughout the North Carolinas and westward across the Great Lakes, Ohio, and the Deep South, as well as across the Pacific Northwest and Hawaii. It will be wetter than normal across Florida and from the Central Rockies throughout the Pacific Northwest. Okay. Across Canada, it will be warmer than average from the Atlantic Canada into eastern Quebec and along the Pacific coast into the Northwest Territories and colder than average elsewhere. Precipitation will be above average across eastern Quebec and the prairies and near to below normal elsewhere. So here it says and for the Ground, Groundhog Report, Groundhog Day Report. February temperatures will be warmer than normal from the west to the Pacific coast, as well as across Alaska and Hawaii. Near to below normal elsewhere. Expect below normal precipitation from New England throughout the Carolinas and westward across the Great Lakes, Ohio, and the Deep South for the Groundhog Day Report. As well as across the Pacific Northwest and Hawaii, it will be wetter than normal across Florida and from the Central Rockies throughout the Pacific, Pacific Southwest. So expect there to be here, it says, um, below normal weathers from right here, Alaska and Hawaii, as I said in the previous report, uh, previous report, there was a low rain, low precipitation in Alaska and Hawaii. Right here, below normal precipitation from New England throughout the Carolinas and westward across the Great Lakes, which is here again, below normal to Ohio, to the deep south, the Great Lakes, across the Pacific Northwest, and even Hawaii. Expect below to normal precipitation, rains, storms, um, snow, whatever kind of precipitation it is, expect below to normal precipitation. I'll see cloudy uh, mix. Across Canada, it will be warmer than average from Atlantic Canada into eastern Quebec and along the Pacific coast into the Northwest Territories and colder than average elsewhere. Precipitation will be above across eastern Quebec and the prairies and near to below elsewhere. Okay? 
So let me go here to Let's go to Telemundo. Let's go to Telemundo.com. Right here, unless you're on Telemundo.com. Okay, so let's go to um, Sports Horoscope Community Live Peacock. Okay, Entertainment Immigration News here on Telemundo.com. You can also view this in Spanish as well. It's Economia, Estados Unidos. America Latina, Immigration, oh, here we go, Planeta Tierra. Salud, Economía, Mexico, Estados Unidos, Investiga, Immigration y todo. So here's a report here, Telemundo.com. It says Planeta Tierra, El Recigo de Comer, Peces de Agua Dulce. So it says right here there's issues with uh, the fish as well. They say right here, Seguía de Ensano con una de las zonas más ricas de Argentina. It's giving you some more issues here from the Latin American perspective. They're arresting climate, climate activist Greta Thunberg. California and why is the water, water level here? Casi la mitad de los glacieras están con ganados a la desa para ser. Right here. More, more information here. Planeta Tierra. Right here. They salva la vida de animales here. Media ambiente. Capa de ozono. Nuestras señales. Recuperación here. Planeta Tierra. Cientos right here. It goes here. More information about the climate, global climate energy report here. Going to California as well as Australia. More information on global climate reform, climate change. All of this is available from the Almanac to Telemundo to Univision here. Climate change, global climate reform, all of this information is available on Telemundo. And then we go to Univision. Right here, the, the, the Earth climate, re climate report, report. And the Latin American Spanish language here. Immigration, news, po politics, Estados Unidos, America Latina, salud. We're gonna go right here to salud. Aquí en ahora. We're talking about the benefits of health. Cancer. Right here, heart surgeon. More information about your health. Natural remedies, contra la gripe for the cold. Right here, all of these reports here, more health reports, are available too on Univision as well. Right here too. All this is available on Univision as well. Here, it talks about here. Están son las falsas creencias más frecuentes a la hora de comer. La importancia de apego o por qué no mirar. Es decir, cuando estás con tu bebé. Right here, talking about your baby and importance. I'm going to the doctor and looking at what is important right here. 
when you have to look at how using your phone for issues related to the health of your child. And more health reports too as well. So you have Almanac and then if you're in the Latin American language, you also have it here too as in Vision and Telemundo. So I just wanted to go ahead and, and, and share that with you guys as well. So you can also find these reports too on Telemundo. You can also find these reports on Telemundo and, and Univision in Spanish as well. So it talks about health for your child and for your family. Here, the studio pone en el agudo de los beneficios. You know, right here. Okay, more information about your health on Univision and Telemundo as well. Okay. We're going to head and continue before we close out this report for um, this weather report. Okay. So when I try to uh, close out this report. Let's go ahead and get to the Boston Air Quality Index. If you could bear with me here, bear with me again. Tomorrow is the first day of classes here at Harvard University. Tomorrow is the first day of classes for Monday, January the 23rd. First day of classes for spring 2023. Here on the campus of Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So now we're going to go on into the air quality index related to RSV or COVID, our flu, our pneumonia, viruses currently in the air for the flu season. The air quality index for today on Sunday, January the 20, 22nd is at 30, which is good. The air quality is good. For the past 48, 48 hours, it is good. The temperatures have been low to medium. The pressure right now, air quality pressure is at 1025. The humidity, humidity has been relatively low to high. The minimum at 76, the max at 96. The wind has been variant. The minimum at two and the maximum at seven miles per hour for the wind. And as you can see, all of this is available on their official website at aqicn.org. All of this is available at the official website at aqicn.org. So all of this is available on the air quality index 30 at 30 30 which is good for temperature at Sunday at 9 o'clock in the morning. The air quality is good. Let's go on to another website here. Let's look at the air quality trends and data report. I can see all over the state of Massachusetts in the common with the air quality is good. Yellow means green means good. Yellow means moderate. Orange means unhealthy, red means unhealthy, 
purple means very unhealthy and zero means there's uh, gray means there's no data so as you can tell these arrows related to what we're talking about the low tide the low to high tide in the northeastern area bringing with that low to medium tide with green here being there is good quality of air which is less pollution less pollution as we can tell with that climate climate report with that climate report as we can tell here as you can tell With the, low, the, with the air quality index, green, which just means it is good. So, green, which just means it is a, a good air quality index as well, which is at 30. So as you can see right here, zero to 50 means good, 50 to 100 is moderate, 100 to 150 is unhealthy. So as you can tell here, the air quality index right now is between is at 30, which is um, 50. If it was above 50, it would be moderate. So clear air. Still, I would continue to check on your engine. Continue to check on your car. Make sure that your car is up to date with oil changes, um, as well as you are um, um, have. Um, well, ventilation is clear throughout your home and keep your humidifier available in your home for uh, the air nearby. So keep a humidifier on hand for, uh, for um, any issues um, in your home. So right now today the air quality index is high. In for the for uh, Sunday, during the twenty twenty second, okay, at nine o'clock, we're about to finish this report up. So right here it says temperatures throughout the month of January for La Nina are expected to be below average for months of the U.S. From the plains eastward, although New England will likely turn out to be above average, as will also be the case for the rest of contiguous U.S as well as Alaska and Hawaii. So there was a little bit of snow this month for January. There wasn't a lot. Okay. It says, according to the Farmer's Almanac, time-tested weather formula for the month of January going into February, there will be snow, but probably not as much as a snow report enthusiasts might expect of for January. On average, we'll see near normal amounts of the snow from the coast to coast, from the west to the east. However, there will be notable month to month variations. So, this is Almanac. You can find all this information on almanac.com for La Nina. For La Nina. Okay, so all this is available on almanac.com. Especially leading up into February for a Groundhog Day. Right here, okay, Groundhog Day for the Super Bowl. Right here it says February 2023 on almanac.com. Temperatures for February will be warmer than normal from the west of the Pacific Coast across Alaska and Hawaii and near to below normal elsewhere. Expect below normal precipitation from New England throughout the Carolinas and western across the Great Lakes, Ohio, and the Deep South, as well as the Pacific Northwest and Hawaii. It will be wetter than normal across Florida and from the Central Rockies throughout the Pacific Southwest right here. Across Canada, it will be warmer than average from the Atlantic Canada into eastern Quebec and across the Pacific Coast into the Northwest Territories and colder than average elsewhere. Right here. 
says precipitation will be above normal for Quebec and the prairies and, and uh, new to normal elsewhere. So like I said before, this is a forecast for February 2023 for uh, almanac.com, okay? And you can also find this information on Univision in the Latin language, Noticias, as well as Climata, right here, as well as Telemundo for Salud, for 50 over, Salud Mental, Medicina, Nutrition, Enfermedades, and Fitness. All of this is available right here in Health, Salud, on Univision and Telemundo as well. Okay. So now we're about to finish up. We did the air quality report. Again, the air quality is good. At 30 to 34 is good. Right now it's Sunday from 11 o'clock. So the air quality is good. Okay, now to finish off, again, I'm here on the campus of Harvard University right now, so bear with me. Classes do start tomorrow. So right now I'm on the campus of Harvard University and spring 2023 classes do start tomorrow on Monday, January the 23rd. So bear with me. We have one more report to do. One more report to do. We have the Boston Foundation, uh, the Climate Reform Climate Progress Report for November of 2022. So we have one more report to do. For uh, the boss, so thank you again to this last, last and final report that we have to do on the weather for the month of January. This here is, thank you to the Boston Foundation for this last report. So again, bear with me. So here it is, the climate, re climate, re climate a change report for the Boston Foundation and they're giving us all these reports here on climate change and climate reform. So I'm going to go ahead and just briefly, briefly get into this. So all this is available on their, on their official website, pretty much on climate change. climate report. 
So this is talking about climate change and climate reform. And we want to thank the, the Boston Foundation for this information on climate change and climate reform. So bear with me guys. I'm going to go ahead and do this report over again. Okay, I just wanted to I wanted you guys to see this report. I wanted to to, to show this report. Okay. And I'm gonna I'm gonna redo this report again. I'm gonna make this kind of a little bit quicker and redo this again. But I wanted to show you guys this report right quick from the Boston Foundation, as you can see. Um, on climate change and climate reform is talking about the progress reform with it for the, the goal of climate change and climate reform here they want net zero emissions increased social equity and climate resilience and this is the, the Boston Foundation Boston Climate Progress Report of last year 2022 Here's what they expect their outcomes to be based on the public report. Low carbon electricity, electrified mobility, equitable housing and mobility, electric and resilient buildings, greater integration of energy systems, targeted use of fuels, reduced waste and sustainable energy recovery. And I'm gonna redo this report again, so bear with me. Sustainable carbon dioxide removal, preserved and enhanced natural carbon stock, protected coastline prepared for extreme weather and repair of past harms. So if you can, um, it says low carbon electricity, equitable housing and mobility. All of this information here is their goals and what they want for climate reform and climate change. Again, final goal and a final outcome is to electrify Boston small buildings, local energy planning, building a resilient coastline, and a final goal from the Boston Foundation is neighborhood climate justice. Okay, and that's their final goals for climate change and climate reform. And all of this here is available on the Boston Foundation's report. Again, here it is, uh, the final goal and the final outcome is to electrify Boston small buildings, increase um, knowledge and awareness of climate change and climate reform, local energy planning, okay, organizing and planning energy in a, in a, in a good way, building a resilient coastline, of course, and neighborhood climate justice. So having people more organized here on what is uh, climate change and what is climate reform. So it's pretty much getting people So getting people informed and getting people um, aware of what climate change and climate reform is, okay? So again, here are the goals and all of this is available right here on the Boston Climate Progress Report of 2022. And let me go, go ahead and give you guys an official website. Let me go ahead and give you guys an official website.
It is www.tbf.org. And that official website has more information on climate change and climate reform from the Boston official publication of the Boston Foundation. Again, they're, they're, the, one of their main goals for climate change and climate reform is net zero emissions, increased social equity, and climate resilience. And you can find all this information here on www.tbf.org. Okay. Here, and then the, it's like a, a, a 100 page report. It goes more, more into information about exposure to pollutants, flood risk, poor food access, limited healthcare access, poor transit options, access to nature, extreme heat. Again, it's another 100 page report. Right here as well. It keeps going further and further and further and further and further and further into the Boston Foundation's climate change and climate report, climate change and climate um, reform report right here. Again, more information here. Again, their goals are net zero emissions, resilience, and increasing social equity. Again, the goals of climate change and climate reform is net zero emissions, resilience, and increasing social equity. Again, their goals are net zero emissions, resilience, and increasing social equity. So I'm going to go ahead. I gave you guys that official website. It's www.tbf.org. Again, the goals are net zero emissions, resilience, And increasing social equity. And all of this is related to climate change and climate reform. Right, it talks about resilience and says a diverse local resource mix is less dependent on regional supplies of fuels and uses local distributed energy generation. It creates opportunities for more secure and stable electricity systems. Increasing social equity, a balanced mix of energy resources creates an affordable transition. And therefore, talking about net zero emissions, rapidly scaling low carbon electricity resources is a foundational net zero action. And all of this is available on the Boston Foundation's website, on their climate change and climate reform official, official report, annual report 2022 www.tbf.org and this is all of this is available it's a hundred page report it goes into detail by detail by detail by detail on climate change and climate reform goes to some more of their goals here like I said before improved air quality affordable housing people centric mobility healthy food access coastal resilience green storm water management and heat emblem island heat island and abatement Again, all this is available on the Boston Foundation's official website at www.tbf.org.
tbf.org. You have the official of uh, these government officials that sponsored committee this official website here. It goes into the um, Andrea Campbell up until Chris Cook of the Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Foundation, Green Wave Conservancy Foundation. Keeps going to some other people here. Julia Howard, project management teams here. Um, more information. All these people that sponsored this report. Here as well. Okay, so thank you to all these officials for sponsoring this global China, global climate and change report. Okay, again, this is sponsored by the Boston Foundation. Their annual annual report. Okay. All right, so here, and then we're gonna finish that off here. Okay, we got into some more information from um, the NLAA. Thank you to um, the Weather Underground. Thank you to the Weather Channel. Thank you to Almanac.com. Thank you to the Boston Foundation. Like I said before, we just got to be talking about that. Thank you to the airqualityindex.com, AccuWeather. The Air Quality Index, their official website is at aqicn.org. And almanac.com. And then for more information in the Spanish language, you can go to univision.com as well as telemundo.com okay all right so that's more information as well okay so again this is laqueen battle i thank you so much for your time and your attention today okay and there is the finish off our report and i will be uh hopefully we We'll be sharing this report, um, and we will be repeating this report as well. So thank you. So again, thank you so much for your time and attention today. I really do appreciate it. Okay. You can also find all my credentials and licenses and certification on my LinkedIn website profile at www.linkedin.com slash laqueen slash ian slash laqueen battle. You can also find me on LinkedIn on my basic winter spotter from the National Weather Service Center, basis of meteorology and FAA. You can also find all my credentials there on my LinkedIn profile for laqueen battle. You can also find it there. Okay, I'm also on all social media platforms. YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and as well as Facebook. Okay, all right, so this is Laqueen Battle, a battle for safe responder services. I will be repeating this again in a more simplified and shorter format. So bear with me. Just give me, it is about 11.40, 11.30 right now. So give me about 20 minutes and I will be repeating this again. All right. Okay. So this is looking.